Hello friends, this video on Kingdom Animalia part 17 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. This may be direct or indirect. Let us now move to the next higher phylum that is the mollusca. So let us look at some of the basic characteristics of mollusca. Mollusca is again one of the ancient group of animals with soft bodies. They, are, they also have soft bodies. So here you can see this octopus. So octopus falls under this category mollusca. This is the second largest phylum in Animalia kingdom. Which was the first one? The first largest was arthropods. So the second largest is mollusca. As I told you before also that uh, there are so many marine animals which we are not aware of but they are actually huge in number. So mollusca is one such group. They have complex body differentiation. Body is bilaterally symmetrical, triploblastic with ectoderm, endoderm, mesoderm, germ layers. Reduced coelomic cavity that is they are coelomates. So they have a true coelom present. So these are some of the common features. Organ system level of organization because they have complete organ systems that is complete and distinct organ system rather. Their body is less segmented and soft. So as I said, they are soft bodied and segmentation is not that noticeable. Like how it was for annelids and arthropods, not that much of segmentation is there. In some of the mollusks, some segmentation is seen, but it is not very remarkable or very noticeable. However, the body is covered by calcareous shell. So the covering, the outer surface of the body is covered by calcareous cell. Now, the body can be divided in three parts distinctly, that is head, foot and hump. So, body can be divided distinctly into three parts. What are those three parts? Head, foot and hump. So, foot is muscular and it helps in movement. Head will consist of all the sensory organs. And hump is the portion which connects the head and the foot. So we will actually see it in a picture. Talking about their mode of nutrition, they can be free living or parasitic. They can be terrestrial as well as aquatic. However, most of them are aquatic. They are mobile and their mobility is because of the presence of the muscular foot. So let us look at the structure of mollusca. So this is how the structure of a mollusca looks like. So here let us look at the different parts of a mollusk. So here what you are seeing is a is the real picture of a mollusk and this is how it looks like. So it looks so strange right that an animal looks somewhat like this but that is the truth. So here this portion is head so this is the head and inside the head you see there is some structure at the center so that is the mouth now here at the other end you have anus which helps in ejection here you see some structures are present on both sides these are nothing but the gills which helps in respiration and here this portion is the food portion so this entire region actually consists of the food now this is a ventral view that is this is the front view so on the back side on the dorsal side of it you have the food so you just see how big is the food so this much area is occupied by the food so now if you look at its side view, you will be able to understand what is foot, what is head and what is hump. So head, you know, it is on one corner. Hump is this elevated portion. So this is the hump. And what is foot? Foot is the bottom portion. That is the bottom side of this one. So you are getting me the structure is somewhat like this on, on the side view. So this is your hump. This base is your foot. And on one side you have the head. So that is the basic structure, so the three parts, head, food and uh, hump. Now we also see that there is a soft spongy layer of skin over the hump and that is known as mantle. So this spongy layer is the mantle 
and the space between the hump and the mantle is called mantle cavity so even inside that mantle so mantle is like an outer covering of the hump so between the mantle and the hump the cavity or the space which you have that is the mantle cavity and here you see this region what you have that is known as girdle and what is that this is nothing but used for defense just now i was telling right it is covered with a calcareous shell so this is the shell i was talking about which ensures protection to the internal organ of the mollusk so this mollusk which is being displayed in this picture is a chiton so these are the basic structures of a mollusca so now let us look at the different examples of mollusks chiton is an example so here you see if you look at this kind of a view so this is your girdle this outside portion or the calcareous cell and the center portion which you see it is the hump from top it is the hump but on its bottom side is the foot octopus that is another example pila unio these are all examples so here also you can see the calcareous cell right so even though their external structure looks so different but basically their characteristics are all the same so let us talk about the organ systems of mollusks what are the different organ systems and how do they behave and function so we will again start with the digestive system so they have a complete digestive tract with mouth stomach pharynx esophagus intestine and anus so with everything they have a complete digestive tract two openings excretory system they have nephridia present in many of them for excretion that is for removing waste products from the body respiratory system they have gills which help in respiration for aquatic mollusks in the previous picture in chiton i showed you right where are the gills present so they actually help in respiration but gills are present only for the aquatic mollusks what about the others for others they have a large mantle cavity area so through that large area of mantle cavity or through the surface of the mantle cavity the respiration actually happens in case of terrestrial mollusks so terrestrial mollusks respire through the large area mantle cavity so gills for aquatic mollusks and for terrestrial mollusks the mantle cavity is useful circulatory system they have open circulatory system so no blood vessels involved now coming to the nervous system so they have again a relatively complex nervous system because as we come higher as we reach higher the complexity is increasing so the complexity of the different systems are also increasing so some mollusks do not exhibit cephalization while some others are highly cephalized so this is one peculiar observation in case of mollusks till now we saw that cephalization was present in all the higher phylums starting from platyhelminths but in mollusks there are some mollusks where there is no cephalization at all whereas there are some other mollusks where there is too much of cephalization right so here what do we have in the nervous system there are two main nerve cords two pairs of main nerve cords running the length of the body so if you make a rough diagram of the nervous system it would be somewhat like this so this is how the nervous system rough diagram would look like so here you have the buccal cavity or the mouth whatever you call it here you have the brain or the cerebral part this is the esophagus so this is the esophagus and here you have the pedal ganglia so there are ganglia are present at important parts of the body now two pairs of main nerve cords running the length of the body so here you can see the nerve cords which are running 
the length of the body. So throughout the length of the body, you will have those nerve cords. Ganglia are present as local control centers and important body parts. So these are the local control centers of ganglia. Buccal ganglia, cerebral ganglia, again pedal ganglia. So these are the ganglia which are present in important parts. Esophagus is encircled in nerve ring. So this is a nerve ring inside that is present the esophagus. So cerebral ganglia is present above esophagus and pedal ganglia is present below esophagus. So this pedal ganglia is what which serves as food and helps in locomotion. Specialized sensory organs or receptors are also present. Many of them have eyes as photoreceptors as you can see in case of the octopus. They have eyes as for their visibility. Sensor containing tentacles present to detect chemicals, vibrations and touch. So tentacles are also visible in case of octopus. So they are sensitive to touch, chemicals and vibrations. So these are some of the specialized sensory organs present in the mollusks. Mouth has a file-like rasping organ for feeding which is called radula. So this is a special organ which is present only in the mollusks that is used for feeding. So in order to catch its prey, they need some organ which helps in catching prey. So that organ is nothing but radula. So let us now look at the reproduction. How do they reproduce? So sexual reproduction. Sexes are again separate. They are mostly oviparous that is they lay eggs. Indirect development that is a larval stage is involved. So when the fertilization happens, the zygote develops and they grow into a larva which is an intermediate state and that larva then later grows up to become a mature adult. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.